All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, take a listen uh, to what this gentleman over here on the right has to say. Made to, to David, uh, King David, uh, uh, out of his descendant, uh, he is going to, to reign in, in this world. He's going to reign in, in Jerusalem. Uh, talking about uh, actual Jerusalem, not uh, New Jerusalem, but, uh, but uh, the Jerusalem that is now there in the Middle East in this very moment. So the Millennial Kingdom is going to take place in Jerusalem and justice and equity are going to be there because why? Because Jesus Christ is going to reign over the whole world. As I said that sometime we trust in government. Alright, so it's interesting to me this gentleman says that in the future Jesus is going to come and reign in the actual Jerusalem, not the new Jerusalem, but the Jerusalem that is now there in the Middle East. All right, so that's going to be my focus. Um, and I want to show you that's, that's very wrong. And it's amazing, really. It's amazing to me how people get this wrong. I just wonder if they've ever read the Bible. In 2 Peter chapter 3, it says, The heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. All these things are going to be dissolved when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Knowing that, and we've got example after example after example all throughout the Bible. It's astonishing. Okay, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Again, in Joel 3, it says, The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. This is speaking of the great day of the Lord when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. When he comes, the heavens and the earth will pass away. And of course in Revelation 20 even we read about whose face the heaven earth fled away. From whose face the heaven and the earth fled away. So I mean there's example after example after example when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven everything's going to be dissolved. Everything's going to be burned up. All right, and, and one more example: Matthew 13, the parable of the wheat and the tares. The harvest is the end of the world. At the harvest, the tares are put in uh, bundles and burned. The where the I'm sorry, the, the wheat is gathered up up into the barn, up into we it's. We, the wheat, the saved, are gathered into his barn, which is above. All right, and there's numerous examples of this. I'm going to show you a couple, two or three anyways. Um, in Galatians 4, uh, it talks about uh, Jerusalem, which is above. Jerusalem is above. Jerusalem is above. John chapter 14 Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. 
right? So, New Jerusalem is above. All right, and so this is um, where <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I don't know how to say it other than that's where Jerusalem is. It's it's beyond obvious. All right, it's beyond obvious. So the Jerusalem over in the Middle East right now will be burned up, completely dissolved, completely dissolved. So this idea that Jews, that Jesus is going to set foot in the Middle East, it, it, it supposes presupposes or supposes that the world will not come to an end when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. This idea that Jesus will come in the Middle East and not New Jerusalem above does not make any sense whatsoever. It don't, I don't know how in the world you can rectify that in your own mind I really don't okay and so that's a problem that's a problem that's a big problem 